Hello, my name's Ross Briley, and this time last week we were gearing up for Royal Ascot 2022. Well now, sad to say, it's over. But don't worry, we're going through every last bit of form with a fine tooth comb. This is the Flatback, and welcome back. Hello and welcome back to the Flatback episode 2. We've had a two-week absence because there was, well... Quite a lot going on last week, wasn't there? Uh, Royal Ascot 2022 will be presenting our very own awards. Best rider, best ride, worst decision. Who knows what's going to come up uh, for the uh, Flat Pack Awards 2022, but we'll soon find out, of course. And we'll be looking forwards uh, to the Irish Derby uh, and, of course, the Northumberland Plate and plenty more besides. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you missed the first one, where were you? But better late than never. Uh, like, subscribe and comment below. Uh, with uh, who you would give your awards to uh, for last week's big meeting as well. Uh, once again, it's not just me uh, sat downstairs uh, sweating from head to toe. I'm joined by uh, two uh, top-class pundits and analysts uh, to uh, go through last week's card. Mr Keith Melrose and Mr Matt Gardner. Small round of applause, please. Small round of applause. No, it's just me. <laughs> It's just me. Uh, gents, welcome back. It's for Matt, wasn't it, after uh, his performance with the two-year-olds. There you go. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. beautiful stuff. Yeah, it was a, it was a cracking week last week. Um, Matt, you, you you knocked it out of the park uh, with the with the two-year-old ratings. Four out of six. Five out of six would have been more profitable because, let's be yeah. honest, nobody really bets on the Chesham, do they? Well, unsuccessfully, <laughs> I've found. From but, here yeah. on in. Yeah. Uh, no, it was, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they went all right at the two-year-olds, yeah. Yeah, how did you enjoy the week as a whole? Oh, I loved it. Really, really good. Really strong program from, from start to finish. Um, every every race has got just something a little bit different for you, doesn't it, to get stuck into. And yeah, such a... You almost forget how good it is until you're in the middle of it. And it's really tiring and there's loads of racing, but it's still good enough to sort of keep you going. So yeah, loved it. Absolutely. And uh, and Keith, it was a it was a long old week. How's, um, how did the, the sprint analysis go for you? Um, obviously, the sprints had quite a lot about them. You're not talking about horses for a lot of the time. Yes, yeah, fair, yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, it was, it was a smashing week. And the, every sprint race, every race in the straight course just about had massive merit. You know, if you could pick any holes at the meeting, it would possibly some of those round course races. But every race in the straight course is going to tell you something. Yeah. Um, we've got Beat Keith coming up later on, of course, which is uh, our uh, quiz where Matt tries to outsmart Keith. I'm considering just changing it this week to can you remember the name of the race if I mention it because yeah. there's so many monarchs there's so many places of, of residence I got Jip on, on Racing Post Live for telling them why it could only be the King Edward VII it couldn't be the 6th or the 8th and I got told I was you know being a nerd Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that's 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 what we want, King. I knew you were a better audience for that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, Thanks, absolutely. Guys. So, so yeah. please un, 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 unfurl. What were you saying? Well, like Edward the Sixth was the son of Henry the Eighth, so he was too old. Right. And Edward the Eighth abdicated after six months. Right. So okay. it could only really be Edward the Seventh. Speaking of the monarchy, she she didn't get the winner. She didn't get the winner. They like, tried. They yeah, tried with a lot of them. Was it Hampton Court? Was it? Yeah. The, yeah. So the odds on shot that got gubbed, yeah, yeah. Reach for the moon, and uh, Mr. Mr. Goldston thought that Saga should have won. Yeah, maybe he should. Maybe. Have. Yeah, I mean, you could say, you could say that about a lot of horses. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't an egregious error or anything. It's just maybe that horse could have won if he'd got things exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, could go for nine hundred for races. Well, it was the, twenty uh, in the Wokingham for a start. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly that. Um, now we start. Uh, we start every show with uh, with one lesson learned, which there were plenty uh, from last week's Royal Ascot uh, meeting. Um, I assume that our lessons are going to be uh, based around uh, last weekend's uh, action, but who knows? They might spring a, a few surprises to my right. So, uh, so Keith. Um, you probably learned a lot from last week, and again, yeah. you'll probably have to relearn it before next year's Royal Ascot. Um, so we're writing it down now. It's recorded. It's on camera for all to see. What was your lesson learned? Don't get too bogged down with a trainer. Sometimes trainers have really switched on owners. <laughs> and with the, Rohan, I got wrong in the walking, and that was galling. And back pot master, and Rohan came and got him. And it's worse when a horse that you've just totally got wrong mm. comes and does you. And Rohan, I just thought ah, he's not quite the same horse this year. Because the the, upper, the the chance of getting him hooked up for the Wokingham just isn't how David Evans works. He doesn't do that. He runs them every week and they run themselves sort of fit or whatever. Yeah. But he just runs them and runs them. But those owners knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah. And that's why it was the MO this time for this horse. Because the owner says, no, no, David, we're going straight back and we're going to win the Wokingham again. Whereas Evans wouldn't have done that. 
Yeah. yeah. And that's why I got... There's, but there's 12 races that we could run him in between now and then. Why not yeah. run him in those? Exactly. And I had that conversation on Derby Weekend too, because that's whatever, you know, they run every three days. Yeah. But, you know, I got bogged down on that a little bit because I know the trainer's MO, but it was the owners that led that and it potentially it made me get Rohan wrong. Right, okay. So, um, so th- th- you, you overcomplicated it from that angle, basically. Uh, yeah, I disregarded, you know, a possibility based on what I think's proper smart Alec trainer form, basically. Right. okay. Fair enough. Um, Matt, what was your lesson for the week? Um, sort of focusing on the two-year-olds, the, the, the big figure first time out and then taking that into Royal Ascot is a, is a, is a pretty big angle. You know, the, the two-year-olds were still quite early in the season by the time you come into Ascot. Mm-hmm. And the ones that that run to a big figure first time out, they're kind of just ready and able to express themselves that bit earlier. You get bogged down in potential a little bit, and those horses have potential, but they've just kind of the further ahead in the curve a little bit. So instead of the uh, the Riddler was an exception, he was like, he's progressed. I think it was his third or fourth start. He was 62 RPR first time out. But Brad Sell dramatized Little Big Bear, they'd all run to 100 plus. And even Holloway Boy, obviously, he had the, the setup to run to a big figure for his first time run. And he was 101 in that Chesham. So just focusing on the horses that have already shown it rather than the horses that are kind of working their way up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It is that, that's the thing. It's that, um, it's that raw ability. It's almost like, a, it's like an audition tape, isn't it? Yeah. They, they basically go, here's my audition tape. I'm ready for Royal Ascot. And some of the horses, they, they maybe muddy the waters a bit by going, well, here, I've got, I've got three things I could throw in. And maybe, what about this role? What about this? I can, I've, I've got range. But some horses are just like, clearly, when Dramatised won at Newmarket, they went, we don't need to go anywhere else. This will win the Queen. They ran, they ran Pillow Talk in the Northland just to avoid her. Yeah. Because they knew she was that good. And yeah, I got a bit bogged down in the horses that maybe win in April and run a decent figure in April, you know, a sort of 90. And in your head, you start thinking, well, a 90 in April is probably a 95 in May because these horses are developing all the time. That's too clever. Her Bradsell was a pretty, like, looking back, it's a pretty, you know, 100 first time out, wildly impressive at York. And you think, well, yeah, that, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Whereas I've sort of overlooked it a little bit. So. Yeah. But, you, but I think people overlook that because of, well, it's York. Yeah. And they went, well, you can't do that at Ascot. Um, and then he went and did it. And Wallbank then went and nearly did it as well. So, yeah. um, And I actually had a, a problem. I went back and checked myself with that, with Brad Sell, because I thought, I'm biased here towards that anti-York form. Let me have a look at horses who'd done a similarly big figure, then gone to Royal Ascot. And there was two... And they were uh, Elzarm, who got beat a nose in the Coventry behind Strong Suit. And there was no Hubris, who finished sick for Paul Cole in the Coventry. So basically, there's only two that qualified, and they both ran really, really well. And I went, okay, fair enough. That's my personal bias. Trust the numbers. I, you should have trusted your numbers, Matt. <laughs> I think the York thing's interesting, though, because I'm sort of the same. But Brad Sell and Wallbank, I was more positive on. Queen Ollie, I think, the filly, mm. I was more negative on, even though she was sort of pretty impressive as well. And then she ran well. Yeah. So I, that, I do have that sort of inherent... Uh, maybe well, not. your form yeah. can be funny, as can we be. all know, but it's still the best evidence you've got with these early two-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, you're over... Fair enough in the other races where you've got more factors coming in, but if you've done it, at your, the, the, that's the only place they've been able to do it. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's because of yours. It's still your best clue, yeah. basically. Um, I think my lesson, the biggest one, which I learned approximately four and a half days in <laughs> which which helped on the Saturday you're not alone in learning lessons four and a half days in are you at Ascot last week are you no and I really wish yeah, yeah to be fair yeah me and a lot of jockeys <laughs> yeah we're in a very similar boat with that um, but on the straight course it is course form plus a little bit of extra stamina is key uh, to all of those races because you had your perfect power dropping back in trip against a lot of horses who weren't necessarily proven over further. Even Flaming Rib had run over seven as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, Rohan had won over seven uh, in the um, in the, uh, the Wokingham. You had Double Crown, of course, who'd been placed in the Guineas. Um, there are a lot of horses there who had proven themselves. And even Nature Strip, you know, wildly impressive over five, but all his best form was over six. So, mm-hmm. and like even the sharp, ones that placed... Sharp sixes, sharp sixes. Too, yeah. Because yeah. I had to look into that Australian sprint form. But a sharp six, I mean, this might be oversimplified, but a sharp six and a stiff five? Yeah, in your, as a rule of, definitely, yeah, I'd do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but even the ones placed in behind, Twilight Calls had won over six, Mooney Easter had won over six, um, Acclam Express had won over six, and in my head, he's a proper 
or at least placed yeah. over six in Maidan. Well, Alex Sibo, he ran quite well, uh, or certainly shaped as if he was as good as ever, but he's a proper five for long horse, isn't he? Yeah. And he was second in that race last year. But, it, but Oxted was dropping back in trip last year, so every single time I think, oh, yeah, about that trip, it, that extra stamina comes into it. They go, they go at a hell of a pace. Um, it's a really unique track. It's a stiff finish. And if, if you get even slightly found out over the trip, you, you can't win. It's not possible. It's, it's so easy to forget that because it is so different to so many mm-hmm. other tracks and so many other setups where you've got to be on the pace, you've got to have a bit of speed. It's, it's not like... It, it's not similar to so many other tracks, is it? It's a, it's a very different setup. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, course form, extra stamina is the key to straight track uh, winnings. Uh, let us know what uh, your lesson learned from uh, last week at Royal Ascot is in the comments below. We will go back in more detail now to present our awards for the Royal Ascot uh, meeting 2022. Winners, losers, let's find out. Hello and welcome to the first and possibly last Flat Pack Royal Ascot Awards, where we present the winners and the losers with, well, fresh air uh, and uh, maybe a comment uh, below the video, because the production budget doesn't stretch to an actual trophy. But we don't need trophies when we've got Keith Melrose's jumper, isn't that right, Keith? You're not getting my jumper. Okay. <laughs> I mean, not, that... even, not even Nature Strips getting my jumper. That's Oscar worthy, though. It's Oscar worthy, though. Well, is. I can only wear three colours. Navy or maroon or mustard. Yeah. And I was told to go a bit lighter and yeah. it's mustard. Yeah, there's lovely stuff. What you can't see uh, below is <laughs> quite a lot to be fair, but uh, the uh, the pink shorts to uh, to give that proper... Salmon. Yeah, the salmon. salmon. Is that the official yeah, term? Salmon, yeah. They were pink when I got them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're You've salmon now. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the award for for best colour combination, of course, goes to uh, to Keith. Uh, Matt, uh, the Royal Ascot Awards 2022. What were the official awards? What are the official best performances as, as, a, as a handicapper, as a man crunching numbers? Who would win the non-alternative awards? I mean, by by he'd be up there, obviously, wouldn't he? Um, sort was, of the, was he straight to the best figure? I think he was... Yeah. 130. Yeah. He was 130, he was, yeah. nature stripped just... 129, and then a big jump down, state of rest 124. I'm maybe. not terribly surprised because those two, I said on myself on Twitter afterwards, I'd be very surprised if that's not gold and silver gone yeah. in performances of the week. These standouts ability wise. Yeah. Nature yeah. strip was incredible. Yeah. yeah. The, um, the, the surprising one for me was um, Dubai Future, given a 120 in the Wolf Return, which was a, yeah. a pretty high figure for what. Looked a fairly modest mm-hmm. listed race on paper. Paul Curtis obviously has a race in mind to get him top four yeah. next time, I would imagine. Uh, that's well, he was impressive, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was. He was, yeah. he was. He was. Uh, but uh, these are our alternative Royal Ascot Awards 2022. Hopefully picking out a few different things that people aren't necessarily awarding. Uh, and the, the first award is the Best Actor in a Leading Role. And to present the award, it's Keith Melrose. So our nominees are. <laughs> no, I don't nominees have, are. I don't, I don't have nominees, and I don't even have a an envelope. Yeah. So who, I'm just going to say this. Um, who was in Sea Biscuit? Who was it? Was it Toby Maguire? <laughs> he was yeah, in Sea Biscuit. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Now the best actor in a leading role. Ascot is always about the track, isn't it? It's it was always the about track. the damn track. <laughs> yeah. We talk about the horses. It's the best horses turning up in these races, and so often it's just. It's about the track, it's about the stiffness of the track. Oh, was he drawn too near the inside on the round course? Where do you want to be on the straight course? We end up talking about it so much. And yeah, it's part of the puzzle. However, I, you know, I wish we could just run them on an airstrip or something <laughs> so that we could find out the best horse without any of that nonsense. Yes. No, no, that's, but that's the Aidan O'Brien, that's what Aidan O'Brien said, isn't it? He said if, if he had his way, they would all have their own individual shoot, they would all self at the same time, everything, and we'd just find out who the best horse is. The time, time trial. Time, time trial, yeah, exactly. time trial, yeah. No one would, no one would watch. No, it's, it, it, it all adds into the puzzle, doesn't it? Yeah, it's all, it's it all part of the kind of um, the aura of it, I yeah. suppose. Well, they all went, obviously, on the far side most of the week. And it was Ro- I was beside Ross in the London studio, and he said, you know what? It's, they're just going to end up going low here. They're going to end up going stand side here in a day or two. And right enough, it was a Hollywood house where you started to see it come that yeah. way. And then Saturday, yeah. on your side, it's been. Yeah. But, um, but this is the thing. I mean, it is. It, it's what I love about Ascot. But it is bizarre in the sense that if you're like, oh, it's a, it's a fantastic World Cup final, but um, God, that, it's all about the pitch, isn't it? It's like you wouldn't necessarily who's who's playing, but you think, well, you know, there is that one goal is <laughs> well, six yeah. foot yeah. higher than the other goal, something like that. Uh, yeah, and the, the it's also a little bit as well with the reason that we had that bias on the straight course is a bit of the World Cup, the best game at the World Cup is never the final. 
Yeah. There's always yeah, a fair. quarter where they were going hell for leather or something. I remember Brazil, Denmark in 98 and places like that. The best game, the final's too cagey. And part of the reason we had that issue on the Ascot straight course was nobody dared to die for that rail yeah. on the near side. And I don't think it's any coincidence that the first person who did it and got the rewards was James Doyle yeah. on Naval Crown. He was riding for Godolphin. You know, it's there's no... You know, you're not going to get the same jip from the owners necessarily. He's comfortable in that role. It's like riding the white cap for Godolphin. Except I, I would argue, I would argue against that in the sense that I think James Doyle could do that because he hadn't ridden a winner all week. He'd been banging <laughs> his head against the brick wall. He'd been placed on this, that and the other. It hadn't quite worked out for him. And at that point, by 4.20 on the Saturday, Roll, Why not? roll a dice. There probably yeah. is a bit of that, yeah. 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 And he could do it, though. Where, what sort of point was that he could do it, whereas Clifford Lee couldn't on El Caballo. And yeah. you know that, that that hurts you. But that was his best, that was his big ride of the whole week, yeah. just about. But they're not all going to follow Clifford Lee, are they? Well, exactly. But they might, when there's 27 of them, they might follow James Doyle. They might follow the good old White Cat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, the track was really, yeah, it was, it was the star of the show. And what I want to ask you about is how much is that to the detriment of future form? Because is it a bit. Ascot, everyone says Ascot horses at Ascot. What does that mean for the rest of the season? Because do they perform elsewhere? Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all, there's good and bad elements to it when you're looking back because you, you almost have the ones that absolutely knock your eye out for being on the wrong side as, you know, big eye catches, that sort of thing. But then you can, you can almost write off horses. The, the, you know, there was the group, I think there was four that were raced slightly separate in one of the straight mile handicaps. Um, and you just think, well, they had no chance yeah. Yeah. because, you know, you, you forget that completely. So it's not, you've just got to remember that they're not out of form, necessarily. They haven't kind of lost it. It's just a case that they essentially have no right. A lot of times in my notes I wrote, forgiven King Stand or forgiven yeah. Hollywood yeah. House because of that sort of thing. And tell you what, it's weird. I would disagree definitely with what O'Brien says. As a punter, I like it that the form's not, well, A beat B beat C mm. D. That's that set. Yeah. I like that we have to parse that. Well, because if, it, if, if that was the case, every race would be the Queen Anne, wouldn't it? Almost. <laughs> yeah. You'd just be like, well, he's the best horse. He has absolutely nothing against him. There's there's no reason why he could, he should get beat. Crack on, one to seven. <laughs> exactly. It becomes, so, like, it becomes like a breeze up, doesn't it, essentially? Just well, yeah, so we, we, we do want to have that, but you need to apply that interpretation, which is why it's so important to be on top of your ascot form yeah. all summer. Yeah. Really. yeah. But that's what makes it special. That's what makes it what's make Cheltenham special as well. Cheltenham horses come back and perform at Cheltenham. Ascot horses come back and perform at Ascot. Uh, Pontifract horses come back <laughs> for Pontifract Royal Pontifract that's what I want next year um, okay uh, next award uh, this is uh, from uh, be presented by Matt Garner is Progressive Middle Distance Horse of the Week the award presented by Matt Garner goes to uh, Elder Elder of I'm, I'm a little bit skewed here just because I like the race and I like the sort of horse that it produces um, it's, it's, it's thrown up some really good winners. Santiago, he won an Irish derby. Um, Stradivarius, Kew Garden, Leading Light a few years ago, really good stayer. And I just like those sort of races because I know that 10 out of there are going to be really interesting next time. And he's the sort of horse that I think looking forward to like the ledger, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's the sort of race that the ledger now almost as the sort of like that triple crown idea kind of fades into sort of history a little bit. Well, we've We've got the fifth classic was around last week, of course, won by Perfect Power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's come dressed in the winner of the In the World Perfect Cup. Power colours, <laughs> yeah. 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 How can we not celebrate a classic winner like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, Matt. Um, yeah, on. no, I just think that it, it almost presents opportunity for a wider range of horses. So obviously this is a group two, you've got kind of a, a mix of abilities in there. You're getting more of these really good handicaps that are over a mile, mile and a half, mile and three quarters that you think, well, actually, yeah, that could make up into a ledger horse because they're essentially like minor group races. They're more competitive, the deep, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then you've got your horses that are coming out of the kind of, well, I'm not quite good enough to win a derby, but that could be a ledger candidate. Mm -hmm. So you're just picking through all of those things. And I do think Elder Elder could be really good. And there's quite a lot of ledger trials to run now because there's a big gap from now until the ledger. You've got about five or six. So it's yeah. going to keep coming up that far. It does, yeah. Very unvarying, I thought, Elder Elder of. I mean, he very rarely runs horses in those. He's not, apart from Kingston Hill, I guess, maybe, you know, he's not really a mile and a half to two mile, three-year-old kind of trainer. Uh, they usually, his best horses take a couple more years to get going. I thought it was 
difference to what you would expect from a Roger Varian horse, which I think is quite interesting. Yeah, quite, yeah I've not really thought about that too much, but it's yeah. Because you, you know, you, you postpones, you, mm-hmm. you know, that your defoes, they yeah. take time to progress. Sort of slower burn type, type idea. Well, there was yeah. a record with the horses he sends out at two is perfectly good. It's a, yeah. it's a strange one. I mean, Haggis is exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, you, you associate Haggis with Baeids who develop later, but in reality, his two year old strike rate is excellent. Good trainers, aren't they? They're just good. They're just yeah, good. Yeah. Some, good trainers. Sometimes people are just good yep. trainers. Yep. Belated realization of the week uh, is awarded by Keith Melrose. Uh, we've already touched on it. We but... have touched on it. I didn't realize we were doing it actually. But it was yeah. James Doyle uh, going in that near side. You know, we said people were saying all week, try the actual, try the real, <laughs> try the real, and it was. <laughs> Care to try the rails? Sir? Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm fine, thank you. You know, it's like all, it was almost like only the bounties were left in the tub. <laughs> when they, but it turns out they were actually Maltesers. The bounties were covering the Maltesers. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. And then, but it was only the rail. You know, we looked at the Wokingham, and the first four were the four horses that spent longest on the rail, which is why the Wokingham was such a ridiculous race in terms of where the jockeys went, because unless you could get to the rail, yeah, you weren't going to get anywhere. So it was, uh, yeah, that. The, the option was there all week to have your classic ascot 10, 10, yeah. 10 across the field. Well, I, would, I would argue, had William Buick not already, had Noble Truth in the jersey, was that not what he did? I suppose he did about half yeah. an hour earlier, yeah. Yeah. to an extent, yeah. yeah. But it was Friday, that was also Saturday, so, you know, we're, yeah. we're looking at, you know... It took a long time for people to go, 30 races. hang on a minute, 50% of ascot races are usually one down that bit. <laughs> Why aren't most, we going down there? Most of the time you want to be high at Ascot. Yeah. But no, it was it took a while, but uh, and it You're allowed to get high at Ascot? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you're not even allowed to you're not allowed to take your hat off unless it's fifty degrees. <laughs> if it gets to forty degrees, then you can then you can start getting high. Now, patrons are reminded that now <laughs> <laughs> now you are welcome to lose it. Yeah. Quite frankly. Uh, okay, belated realisation of the week. Um was uh, Godolphin, maybe potentially there. For in yeah, let's choices. go with Godolphin then, just to cover all our bases. But yeah, yeah. basically it was decided. Godolphin went right. Let's give that a bash. Okay. Uh, ride of the week. I think we're all going to slightly disagree on this, uh, but uh, this is going to be a fight. It is going to be a bun fight. Yeah. Um, bun. Release the buns. <laughs> Release the buns. Um, ride of the week. Uh, Matt Garner. What was your ride of the week? Um, for comedic value, it was Spencer <laughs> on Chief of Chiefs. In the Buckingham <laughs> Palace, I think it was yeah. drawn twenty-five, and in the final furlong makes the challenge nearest the far row. The brilliant to watch, it was really yeah. good. <laughs> uh, but I do think that was influenced by he rode Bolt Hole earlier in the week, and he was one of the small group that just had no chance whatsoever. And to be fair, that horse looked like he'd kind of do quite well for a long way, and then basically everything went against him. He, I, I think Spencer kind of went, well, "I'm not doing that again," and just. I'm off over there. He gets yeah. a lot of jip, Spencer, but he, he does think about it. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely yeah, thinks brilliant about it. brilliant to watch. Yeah. yeah. He, again, he, he is one of those jockeys that you kind of go, uh, Jamie, we're going to do this. And he goes, I don't care. I've already, I've already <laughs> thought about this race. And, yeah, but we're all, no, no, no. And sometimes, magnificent. Mm. And sometimes yeah. you think, Jamie, you've, you've, you've made that a little bit yeah. more difficult than it should have been. Yes. Uh, but uh, but that's, the, that's, 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 that's Spencer. And, Similar to Dottori and similar to Moore almost, they've kind of been around so long that they've earned the stripes to make those strange decisions. Yeah. Sometimes it pays off. Well, you're booking Spencer with that knowledge, aren't you? Yeah. As well, that's the other thing. Are you going to get something along that you side, might, yeah. you might, You might just go off piste one day. <laughs> so yeah, you know yeah. you know that's a possibility. Yes. Yeah. If you don't want that, you don't book Spencer. Yeah. I, I am, I'm just hearing I'm contractually obliged to say, surprisingly good from the front, though. Oh, Which yes. is what everyone says about yeah. Spencer. He's, he's sponsored by Surprisingly Good from the front. Yeah. But they, all, they always are. Hughes was the same. That's how I always respond to that one. Richard Hughes was the same, even though yeah. he got his... He uh, was another one that did something crazy at Ascot once, wasn't he? He, went, he did the opposite. He went far side, took right back, and then ended up on the near rail. <laughs> he, that was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah he can, it happens. Yeah. Um, ride of the week for you? Every time I watch Moore on Rohan, it gets better. Yeah? Because not only... He, he's out slow, obviously, ho- Rohan's a hold-up horse. And you see him, he can see what's happening on the far side. He sees all the low-drawn horses drifting sort of towards the near rail, but not quite. And he goes, well, rail it is, lads. Pulls him right in behind the leaders, and he doesn't leave it until he has to. Yep. And he comes off the rail only to get between Potmaster and, was it Jumby? Yeah. Yep. And he only leaves the rail then. It was just, it was masterful. He, th- that's where we, it's, there was no plan there particularly. He reacted to the race that was happening. He saw the race that was actually playing out. He didn't care that it should have been 10, 10, 10. Yeah. He saw the race that was actually happening. Thought, right, well, that's what... He was drawn in 19. You know, he was drawn... Yeah. Uh, he shouldn't... He had 10 horses on his outside. 
But he went on that rail. He knew that was a place to be. Took his chances. Bang! It was it was a phenomenal ride. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I, I, mean, I would say almost every winning ride from Ryan Moore would be my ride of the week. He gave some belters, didn't he? Absolute yeah. corkers. I mean, just wonderful stuff on, and similar in the sense of changing of the guard uh, and broom. Almost, you kind of thought mm. front running like, over a mile and a half at the round yeah. track. Like, come on, Ryan, we know how that ends up. And, and both, yeah. executed them to perfection. Meditate was a similar. I'm, I, I think she probably was the best horse in the race, but he Very went measured, wasn't it? Yeah, he said, "I'm just going to accept these fractions, and you lads crack on with whatever you want to do." Uh, Kipriós yeah. was a, that was a different type of excellent ride, wasn't yeah. it? He just kept. He knew the horse was. He had to keep the horse interested, but yeah, there was. Uh, and I, the timing on Little Big Bear, I thought as well, was kind of. You looked over, and he went, "He's got a bit too soon. I've got six furlong stamina here. I'm absolutely fine." There was a side on shot. That I saw that little big bear thing, and it, it's so different to what you see with the, the kind of normal TV angle. And he almost knew he was on by some way the best horse in the race, but he kind of just left it long enough and then just gradually let him drift across. Just yeah. really good. So, I mean, I'm, I never think about it and talk about it in this depth. I'm not sure I've seen as good a riding performance over a week yeah. from a jockey, mm-hmm. possibly ever off the top of my head. I agree. Yeah. I, th- I thought it was, a, it was two year olds, older horses, round track, sprints, mile and a half, handicaps, group races. You, you, different you types of things, it. like the Kiprios ride and the Rohan ride were so different, but both required live thinking. We talk yeah. about the split second decisions jockeys make, and when they cite that, what they mean is, we always get it wrong because it's a split second decision. Yeah. But he got them all right yeah. in that week. It's, I mean, it's a weird thing, but he's, it, it, <laughs> it reminded me of uh, Hyung Min Son, the, uh, the, the Spurs player in the sense of left foot, right foot, free kicks, headers, assists, goals. Every decision he made, yeah. he made the right one in that moment. And he, and you look at other jockeys and other players and you compare them. You go, why can't you do that? Why didn't you, <laughs> yeah, why yeah, didn't yeah. you do that in that moment? Yeah. And you go, well, because you're not as good. You're not as good uh, in that instance. Uh, but Ro- yeah, Rohan was pretty, pretty special. What was yours then? Um, it, all of that's it. All of Ryan Moore's. All of Ryan Moore's. I think I think that's completely fair. I mean, it, you, lesser men would say you're sitting on the fence there, but I think that's absolutely justified. I uh, I'm not. I've I've turned the fence into a a, a compound, <laughs> and I'm sitting on the whole thing. Uh, so ride of the week goes to Ryan Moore. Insert horse here. Visual performance of the week. I thought, regardless of what happened, I thought Inspiral was spectacular to watch. Given we are all sort of quite hard numbers guys here, does visual and performance of the week mean? One that was rubbish on the clock, but we liked it anyway. It's, it's one that I just thought, I don't care how good the form is. I don't yeah. care what the number is. I yeah, don't okay. care where this works out. I just want to watch it and enjoy it. And that was the coronation for me. That was, it was... Yeah, she made them look ordinary, didn't she? It was that, yeah. it was that little moment, wasn't there, when he thought, oh, she didn't get stuck in a gap here. And then all of a sudden she was lens clear and was, that yeah. was it. Yeah. yeah. It, got easy, it got easier for as it went on because the first furlong wasn't terribly easy either. Yeah. Didn't she get a wee niggle at one point yeah. as well? Yeah, she was a bit slow out of the boxes. She, she, she almost... For, she was like, I thought we were supposed to be doing this six weeks ago. Frankie's like, we were, but you know, you weren't ready. Now yeah. let's do this. And she just, she danced, she weaved. It was, it was spectacular. Um, and John Gosson came out and said that the Tory didn't overcomplicate that one, uh, which I thought was a bit harsh. But when you're on a horse that can do that, if Stradivarius could have done that, he would have done it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Not many can do that. That was, yeah, I didn't, I've not done like a finishing section or anything, but that just looked like I don't shit. care. I don't, exactly. think, I don't care exactly. about the numbers. I just want to watch. It's going to be a great race for her in Homeless Songs. It's unfortunate that it's Gosden and it's um, well, well, isn't it? Because they they don't do that. They don't they do not do the clashes. They don't take on the Colts. Yeah. So the best we've got with these two is, is that they end up in the same Phillies race, mm. which yeah. is a bit of a letdown, but you'd love to see those Phillies in big races, wouldn't you? He talked about the Nassau and the Falmouth. He didn't mention the Sussex. Yeah. Yeah, you know, whereas yeah. some other trainers would have maybe gone right. Let's have a go for these, these Colts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I, it's I sensible, abs- but it doesn't doesn't butter many parsnips from a fan's <laughs> point of view, does it? No, but se- se- yeah, sensible is it's what wins the day in the end. It is unfortunately, yeah. Um, even if people after the race go, why don't you go for races? Like, you can't win. Like you'd angle about, you know, it's, it's as simple as ask it for and a bit of extra stamina. I'm sitting there going, well, that's a, I can't be doing that, lads. Mm. But it's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it took me four days to go. I'm overcomplicating this, and then it paid you, off. You did the yeah. walking on with me over your shoulder, and you said, "That's got format Ascot. That's got format Ascot. That's got format Ascot." You just did it that way. I ruled. I ruled it down to about six horses, and um, yeah, I think four of them finished in the first six or seven. So 
Jump Can't knock it. Yeah. Uh, existential crisis of the week. What was this? Yeah, we had talked about. I watched Nature Strip. For me, it was just about the performance of the week because he made everything else in that field look ordinary. Winning five for long sprints by four lengths mm. doesn't really happen. We thought when Batash went, that would be it. But he did it, and he was. It was great to watch. And I just, I thought I might oppose him if he runs on Saturday, though, because a, he has had a hard race there, and b, you can't really do that over six furlongs at Ascot to these horses. And I sort of started thinking. I ended up everything fell around me and I thought have we made a categorization error we throw five furlongs and six furlongs in his sprints because is that of the what your brain team. does is it go eh, categorization <laughs> error it does it just is like in big you know the digital letters from the old 80s <laughs> KCO watches on my, on my face yeah uh, no, big but, red cross on the screen did we just make six furlong races sprints because of the next shortest distance but I think it is just Ascot that yeah. I, think, I think it plays into the Ascot thing you made the, you made the point that, that, that assuaged me you could have done it at York yeah you know, and Very you can maybe have done it at Haydock. Yeah. So it's well, the July Cup it could be exactly the same as yeah. well, won't it? It'll be it'll be But no, six no. at Ascot, as you rightly pointed out earlier, most of the field had form over further. Yeah. You know, Highfield Princess ran a great race even. Uh, Creative Force won the Jersey last year. Uh, just about everything yeah. in that race that came Sacred. Um, yes, like I said even Campanelli had run over a had run over a mile as well. Um alcohol free was a bit too slow. Maybe, yeah. But she might not be the horse she was, so we don't yeah. know. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was something to be said for it. But I, d- I did for a moment question whether I got everything wrong in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not necessarily going to assuage you from that notion. Well, I think you're quite right, actually, as well. Keep, possible- me on my, keep me on my toes. Put it this way, it's possible, lads, that um, you know we could have made a difference in life, but we're here, <laughs> we're here in a bunker talking about then? horses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, or it's possible that um, this is the best we could have done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would say uh, we've got two more to go uh, and uh, I would say decision of the week uh, would be um, entering the Holloway boy <laughs> was a decision of the week oh, well he wasn't fit for the Sunday series at Musselburgh so they thought sod it we'll go to Royal Ascot it wasn't something about couldn't get in a box yeah so he yeah, the owner's yeah, yeah. badge fell through or something and then I mean yeah. you don't you don't like crediting that decision with decision of the week but it was wasn't it it kind of was yeah kind of was I'm yeah. not saying it was a you know a, a well thought through decision but it it was a decision. Yeah. And sometimes the ones where you go, just threw a tenner at it or something like that, mm. and you go, decision of the week. And finally, uh, juvenile of the week, Matt yes. Gardner. Not you, you, right. you tiny child. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, yeah. the, uh, the juvenile performance of the week, possibly of the decade, possibly of the last 15, 20 years. What are we talking? How, how long can I talk about it for? <laughs> I really like it. Dramatised. We're done. Yeah, that's it. No, no. Um, yeah, so Queen, Queen Mary, taking out. The US train runner, so Lady Aurelia, Acapulco, Jealous Again. Lady Aurelia was a bit of a freak figure. Um, the other two, but t- take those three out, and she's the best Queen Mary winner since Attraction, 2003. And Brad Sell was 112 RPR, she's 111. Obviously, she get a weight allowance from the mm-hmm. Colts, say they run in a pre morning, that sort of thing. Six furlong is going to suit her even more. I just really like no, her. Oh, top. No, stop. No, I, no, yeah. stop. There was a lot of calls straight after the race, wasn't there? Yeah. I th- I think <laughs> Every she's, time you I get rid of them, though. Yeah. No, I think she's really good. And what I liked, so two things. I like that Carl Burke basically from the start said she's really good. Yeah. No, he couldn't hide yeah. it. They ran pillow talking in Norfolk to avoid her. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just could, couldn't hide it. And she corrected most of what she did wrong on debut. She was slowly away at Newmarket, hung really badly left. She nailed the gates this time. She still edged a little bit left under pressure, but really good time again. So, you know, she's she's two from two, both big form figures, both fast times. I, I just really like her. Yeah, I think that that's the race of the week to follow, I think, for me, in terms of, like, wherever those horses go, uh, anything that performed even vaguely within sort of 10 or 15 pounds of the winner will have will have a, a future throughout the season. Why, why didn't she get a... I didn't see it, so maybe she didn't get a Commonwealth Cup quote. Whereas, you know, Dram- uh, Meditate, who won the, mm. the Albany, she got Guinness quotes and all that carry on. Why are we not given dramatised uh, Commonwealth well, Cup she, Is she a quiet, ref- is she, next quiet reflection, maybe, in terms yeah, of progressing well, as a three year old? And- well, hopefully, better than that. I don't, I yeah. don't know. But, yeah, you know, um, we maybe don't think that like that yet with the Commonwealth Cup. Well, yeah, well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm labouring my earlier points yeah. think, about treating she, she it. She also like- needs to run over seven or she won't win it. Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. That's absolutely yeah, right. So, so, but I do... Do you watch King's Stand? Surely. <laughs> King's Stand, yeah. Surely King's... All the five furlong races, yeah. Well, unless one of those Absolutely. monstrous Australians turns up. Yeah, that is true. But she, uh, she's the one who I genuinely think has the speed to give her a run for the money if she progresses. Yeah, I, I really hope she does. I'm looking forward to her, say that I, I think 
Cream Morning is a pretty obvious one. Have a go at the Colts. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about her. I think he, he loves going to France as well, doesn't he? So yep. he might well do the morning. Yeah, and the, there's a couple done the double Campanelle and Lady Aurelia. They both did Queen Mary, pre morning doubles. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Juvenile of the decade. Well, juvenile of the <laughs> decade. Yeah. From, uh, from Matt Gardner. This week's hot list is bringing you the red hot form lines to follow and the last hot list worked out very nicely indeed. We had loads of winners out of the Showtime Mahomes race and truly acclaimed and adjudicator won out of that Golden Spice contest as well. So fingers crossed that we can repeat the dose again this time. Three races for you that have already thrown up plenty of winners and might well be worth following this week. Uh, first one is Strawman's Handicap at Redcar recently. The uh, Gemma Tutti trained individual is uh, very much in form. We've had a few winners out of that already. Merstica in franchise and Jean-Baptiste all won and Fairmac finished second. Uh, and we've got Carsid and Fairmac entered at Beverly uh, a little bit later on uh, on the day of recording here. But the winner in particular goes for the Cumberland Plate. So look out for Strawman there. Uh, elsewhere, in terms of uh, red hot races, we uh, had a, an interesting novice at Doncaster, won by Red Rambler recently. That threw up Thesis, who won at Royal Ascot last week. And uh, we also had Mount Athos, who finished down the field, who bolted up uh, last time out at Thurs. Uh, now we've got a couple of interesting horses entered this week. We've got Royal Parade, the Godolphin runner, who's likely to be pretty short. But a couple of handicapped debutantes in the shape of Let'em Have It and Superior Council, who have two entries towards the back end of the week. Uh, and the other race, of course, is Mount Kosciuszko, who won at Windsor from the front for Richard Hannon on the 30th of May, and then followed up again at next time out over at Bath. Now, the second Eklil has also won out of that race, and it looks pretty hot form. Uh, Twilight Tone was well down the field and bolted up, and Sun Emperor finished second next time out few horses entered this week out of that race uh, so watch out for Laguna Vanita at Leicester at Checker Square at Newmarket and the winner is also bidding for a hat trick. So there are your three hot races for this week's hot list. Hopefully they'll work out just as well as the last ones did. That's enough of the past, let's look ahead to the future then with our flat pack crystal ball. It's the projections section. Now normally you'd expect it to be a fairly quiet week post Royal Ascot but it's anything but uh, with of course the race everyone's been waiting for it is, of course, the Cumberland Plate. Uh, no, but that's the joy of the flat, uh, the flat season. You get some uh, juicy, tasty races midweek. Uh, Carlisle, I've got the Carlisle Bell and the Cumberland Plate. A nice little listed race there as well. Uh, there's uh, an Irish Oaks trial at, uh, at Nace, uh, where uh, we've had a, a couple of uh, decent angles in there in the, uh, in the past. So keep an eye on especially anything uh, owned by John Magnier. Uh, uh, but this weekend we'll be off to the the Curra, of course, for the Irish Derby and a couple of nice two-year-old races and the Pretty Polly. Uh, but all eyes will be on another very Ascot-esque track. It is the Ascot of the North, of course. We're off to Newcastle, uh, where uh, we're all dressed appropriately, I think, gents. Um, there'll be uh, maybe short short sleeves, short, short sleeves and shorts. Short sleeves, a few more cans as well. A few more cans, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, and we must shout out to uh, the the viewer at home who told us, um, quite frankly, Evo Catty. Hello, Evo Catty. Yeah, I think was he the one who said about the cans, he, or was he the one who said about the coasters? He said the coasters. Yeah, um, I asked at the bar. They said. <laughs> Coasters. Um, it's a bit late for that, quite frankly. Um, and, but there was somebody who said, "I can't believe you're drinking water in a pub, lads." It's pre-midday, and uh, quite frankly, we're not quite there yet, are we? No, no. I'll give it a couple of years. A couple of years. A couple more uh, straight track defeats at Ascot. Yeah, and we'll exactly. A couple of the other years of flip-flopping tracks at Royal Ascot weekend I might be there. We'll be boozed up on a Tuesday morning. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Corra. Newcastle, um, no rest of the wicked and all that. Uh, we're off to uh, yeah, we're off to Gosforth Park. Have you uh, have you been to Gosforth Park in the past? I've been to St James Park a few times, but not. Have you? I've not been recent Newcastle. Not been recent Newcastle. No, Newcastle. I haven't, no. You're going to talk about something about, Ast about Newcastle. I'm going to like because I only realised it one day when it was particularly bad. You know, Newcastle's a track where oh, I can't figure it out, and yeah, but. But Matt's figured it out. Matt's for a man who's never been... Yeah. Yeah, it you've... took me eight visits, but, so I'm embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, so wind, big factor. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 as you get older. Yeah, there's that, yeah. <laughs> now, I've spent a lot of time watching ordinary handicaps through the winter uh, on your weather at Newcastle, and it, it took me a while to get it, but yeah, headwind. And there's some meetings where you... Yeah, it's often a headwind, and as you look at it on the TV, it blows sort of right to left across. And there's some meetings where you can't win unless you're held up on that near rail. 
you've got to be sheltered from it. You see sprints so often where horses that are kind of in the face of it, they'll bomb out and then they'll come out and win next time. And you go, oh, okay, well, that was why. But it's such a big factor that you don't always necessarily see on TV, but it's definitely there, yeah. obviously, if it's windy. But, um, yeah, it's definitely something to bear in mind. Well, it's yeah. because we don't have uh, Leona or Simon down at the Fairlock Pole with a windsock. <laughs> there is that, yeah. Which we, we should really have, because it's what people want to know. It's, it is honestly a massive factor at Newcastle. The yeah. day I finally realised, it was actually a, a jumps meeting, and the horse had just it stayed further, but it just got knackered on the running. And I thought, oh, yeah, it's dead windy, isn't it? Yeah. And it is actually surprisingly close to the water, so quite windy. The water comes in off the sea, and it's, it's sort of across and into their faces. Yeah. It's a massive factor. The straight is sort of uphill. It's a bit of a burn yeah. all the way up the straight, but it just gets compounded by that wind. And it's if you can't figure out Newcastle, it's probably because of the wind. Yeah, okay. So what I need you to do now, Matt, is tell me which way the wind will be blowing this weekend. <laughs> well, just, uh, I'll just have a, no. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see. Won't we? But it, you, you, you'll be able to find multiple examples. If you, you know, you see it, um, horses kind of swing around the bar, on the bridle limb behind. Um, they burst through all of a sudden and you think, oh, that was really impressive. And it's kind of that, but it's also a little bit of those in front stopping as well. So it's, it's yeah. a combination of things. It's easy enough to check. It's hard to get the wind nailed down in advance, but it's easy enough to get the wind sort of half live. Uh, yeah. If you know the sources. Yeah, uh, wind yeah. cam. Wind cam. Yeah. No, not wind cam, but... Uh, um, Where do you find out the wind in Newcastle, Key? Uh, I go what on a site... You use? I use, well, I use netweather.tv and that gives you all the good range stuff. And I can't remember where you find the wind on there, but yeah, you find... It, it gives you an indication of the wind. The, Newcastle is one of the better tracks, actually, for putting it out. They have, I think they measure it and all that sort of stuff. Oh, did so, it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I, this is... I mean, with two episodes in, I think we're going to struggle to top... Uh, the nerdy niche, nerdiest conversation. That's what we're here for, isn't yeah. it? No, it really is, and I'm genuinely enjoying it. But I did just step outside myself for a second there and think: three lads downstairs in a pub talking about wind. Talking Newcastle. about the wind at Newcastle this yeah. weekend, um, and also the absurdity of a sport whereby that is again, if you like, go, yeah, great World Cup final, but we would have won it if it wasn't quite windy. Well, that's that. But also, we, well, I was listening. I listened to a podcast about betting, and it talked about these syndicates that were in Las Vegas going on the sports books. And they, there's a mod. They had models, and they built, and they built wind into their models in baseball games to back overs or unders and home runs. So they knew which way you were facing at the at the mound, and they would just know what the wind was, and they would then bet overs or unders on the home runs. So it comes into even really sophisticated yeah. models. Oh no, I'm sure it does. And and if <laughs> the only. The only way I can possibly imagine what it's like to be a racehorse uh, is park run <laughs> on a Saturday morning. Uh, now, my local park run is uh, it's two and a half laps. It's uphill, it's downhill. It finishes on a... On a it makes Ascot you know, <laughs> look you, like... You see that. You're, you're, you are a horse here, so you're a bit biased. And what, sorry? You are the horse here, so you're a bit biased. It feels horrible when you're running up a hill. Trust me. Come down All right. Saturday morning, Key. Fair. Uh, Potter Newton Park. Potter Newton Park. That's yeah, yeah. Up. It's, it's, they also do virtual races there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, like a virtual yeah. track, doesn't it? Um, but uh, so, and I had this moment last week, right, where it was it was quite windy, and the final section is it's a straight bit, and then you go downhill into a dip, and then come up with a really stiff finish. And it was very windy, and I, I was I thought I'm going to take this guy, and I pulled out, and there was a headwind, and I thought no, and I slipstreamed him, and he kind of looked behind me. Because he could feel like I was, I was, I was, I was slipstreaming down the hill, and I thought, "This is what it's like to be a racehorse, isn't it?" I'm, I'm all this time spent analysing horse racing. A lot, and it's, a lot of the horses I back get pulled out, and then think, "No, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> don't fancy that. Think no, I yeah. don't fancy this. I'm going in behind." Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what was my point again? I don't know. No. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the next thing is that by the end of the season, I might have done crosswinds as well, because I reckon crosswinds are fit racehorses. They're like a seal. Yeah. These big horses, aren't they? So, um, that's next. I've not done it yet. That's next on my list. I want you to crunch the numbers on uh, physical size of a horse, whether the smaller horses win more when it's windy because oh, there's less we uh, surface. You, you watch a lot more cycling than me, but crosswinds are the worst thing in the world. Oh, bike. Echelons, yeah. It echelons. blows up races, yeah. How yeah. can it not blow a horse? It's twice the size of a bike. 
So he's telling the size of a bike. Anyway, yeah. that's next. Yeah, that is next. Uh, <laughs> Sai, a sigh from the gantry tells me we should move on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's Michael Fish over there going, come on, lads, uh, sort this out. Um, other things to, to mention, of course, Newcastle this uh, this weekend, we do have the Gosford Park Cup, another sprint for you. It's, it's basically the veterans' final for the flat. Yeah. You know, all, it's all these old horses, it's Copper Knight, who yeah. won his fifth start this year, not his third. Yeah. One of the pilots said he well, always will get slower as you get older. Do, get, yeah, while, that's true. Caspi and Prince used to run in that race as well. So it's yeah. all these. All these exposed old sprinters. Venturous a, will, be on, will be there this yeah, weekend. Yeah, he's, sure. he's in there. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a great... It's just not got the ITV slot, unfortunately. Mm. I would have that race on the ITV card. You are uh, a bit biased. Again, yes, I am a bit biased on that biased. one. Other thing I say about the Northumberland plate, obviously sprinters this year, but last year I did the stairs, and there was no race where I thought, oh, this is horse for race X more than the Northumberland plate. Mm. Okay. Because you get all, any all-weather horse that needs a long straight to unfurl, and that stares more than most. They need the Northumberland plate. There's a horse called Margaret Dumont, a Hugo Margaret Palmer Dumont. horse. Yeah, yeah. She was she's a Northumberland plate all day. She finished about sixth in the vase last year. But you know, you need a horse if you've got an all weather stare. Generally, they're going to need like the Northumberland. It's a plate. very different setup to Kempton, Lingfield. Exactly, you swing off the stuff. bend, but yep. you've got a dash. Absolutely. Whereas the plate, you get you've got another half mile to go of winding up. So there's a lot of horses where it's what they need. The, the only thing, although I went back and looked at it, and if we scrub 2020 from the records, which we should in, you know, generally, yeah. generally in life, um, where Caravan of Hope beat Australis, and it was a four year old bun fight between those two unexposed horses, um, no horse rated lower than 96 has, uh, has won that race. And they are, and, you know, your Nicholas T's of the world. There are, there are some very experienced horses, a lot of them coming into it off the back of half decent runs at Yorks and Chesters in big races. And you look at it and you go, 20 runners. Um, and a lot of them have form figures of 0, 6, 7, 3. And you think, well, that could bounce back. And time and time again, it goes to the class horse who stays, who comes into it off the back of a good run. It's pretty symptomatic of these heritage handicaps now, isn't it? You, yeah. don't, you don't really get the unexposed ones. And I, I don't think there was an unexposed one in that. Northumberland plate last year and I had a flick through the entries for this and I didn't really spot another one particularly so so yeah. what we're saying is Rajinsky the old road I tried to I, Rajinsky nearly went out top last year he's that sort of horse isn't he yeah he's yeah. very much the sort of horse for this sort of race yeah, yeah. Uh, I've not been following him that closely this year. No, he, he, he ran, he ran well at York, didn't he? Did he, run well he was third behind Cleveland in the Chester Cup. Oh, was it the Chester Cup he ran yeah. well? Uh, but yeah so he's exactly the sort of horse that you're going to get seven or eight places maybe on Saturday when the race comes up each way, Rajinsky, he's absolutely made for that sort of bet, isn't he? He is, absolutely. Uh, so uh, we've got Newcastle. Uh, the other thing to mention about the Gosford Park Cup is um, five fellow handicaps, double figures. Um, the, the top quarter of the draw has a, a huge advantage as well. I don't, again, I don't know if it, that's near side rail, get that covered rail. in behind. Get the rail, yeah. Going to have a big big impact yeah. there. It's, um, it's yeah, it, it's worth watching those horses who are uh, drawn high. Um, elsewhere, we've got the Curragh, of course, at the, uh, the Irish Derby. Again, uh, the enjoyment of the, the flat season is you get a Derby in an Oaks every week, <laughs> practically. Um, and, uh, yeah, the Irish Derby, of course, we're going to see uh, the Epsom form potentially boosted once again, hopefully. Of course, we've seen uh, the, the race last week change of the Gar beat Grand Alliance. Often, that race at Royal Ascot, which is the... King of the Seventh. King of the Seventh, there you go. Loves a monarch, this lad. Um, and it's quite soft Scottish, um, oh, no. <laughs> uh, but it's yeah. Often you know, horses come back off the Derby, they go to Ascot, they run in that race, they run below par, and they go, "Ah, oh, form's no good." This year, we've had a genuinely impressive winner, and it looks like we might have a good race. And your Westovers and your your Stone Ages are going to be very interesting. Yeah, Westlake was a pretty obvious one. You, you mentioned Stone Age when we did the first episode. Didn't As, you seeing a different horse, maybe? Absolutely. So, I, I yeah, I, it's come up sort of as we thought. We said that Westover was going to be put in his fab, and last I saw he was 6-4, to four, and Stone Age was 4-1, to one, and I said, give it a chance to reverse that, because Stone Age, he didn't like Epsom as far as I was mm. concerned. And I think the other thing to make note about that market is the market's made its judgment on where Westover would have finished in the derby. Rob Hornby jumped up and thought he'd have won the derby. But see, Westover's not in this race, and Desert Crown is. He's four to seven, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. So the, the the market is definitely of the view that Desert Crown was the best horse in the Derby, and yeah, I think at the prices, I would have expected that sort of difference between Westover and Stone Age. So I'm still interested in Stone Age at those sort of prices. It'll be great though. We get to see what Westover's about because he came into that race. He ran quite a bit at two, 
But he'd only run once at three before the derby in that Sandown, Sandown Classic yeah, yeah. Car, when he was plainly unfit and didn't have a clue what he was doing. But the, the skills that he showed at Sandown and also the skills in extricating himself at Epsom mm. are not necessarily the skills that win you an Irish derby, if especially if something get, you get a clear run down that straight. Yeah, something um, gets, you can get rolling in an Irish derby. Well, I don't know what the straight is, but it's about six furlongs, isn't yeah. it, or something? But Stone, well, in Stone Age, when at Leopardstown, what he looked so good at was gradually Grinding. going through the gears. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's, he's, 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 su- he's a big horse, he's a grinder. Yeah. You know, changing in the guard would have run a good race in the Irish derby. I was quite dismissive yeah. about him last week. Plods are this. And yeah, he was, they had to get after him quite a long way out as well, didn't they? Yeah. So, but same, he, he would have suited an Irish derby, and I think yeah. Stone Age will be exactly the same. Okay, uh, and uh, it's uh, Rafe Beckett's first runner in the race as well, so it'll be interesting to see if he sends Westover. Does the derby form kind of work out? Uh, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's a big question, isn't it? It is a big question. <laughs> in the Irish derby, I mean, the, the, in the Irish derby, because it's there are, the last 20 years, there are 83 horses have gone directly from Epsom to the current, 16 of them won, which I think is a pretty good strike rate. It's about 20%, isn't it? Yeah. Considering it like three will run every year. Yes, exactly that. Which I, I was, It was a better um, expectation than I thought. There, every other race has no more than one winner in the past 20 years. Um, it's sort of what the you'd Gallinule Stakes extent, in particular yeah. is, is, is poor. It's 16 from, I think it's one winner from 16. Hannibal Barca won that this year. Um, obviously, for example, a lot of horses, this is going off their previous race. Mm-hmm. So, for example, the Dante Sun at one winner, but it's only had three horses who've gone from York to, to uh, the yeah. Curra without going elsewhere. Which brings its own, you know, you probably missed Epsom for other reasons or something. Yeah, yeah. you haven't gone to France, you haven't gone to Epsom, you haven't gone to Ascot. Considering you? a load of those Derby to Irish Derby runs will be O'Brien pacemakers or rags yeah, and that sort of thing yeah. that makes it even makes it read even better doesn't it yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. Um, and yeah so I, I think it's I think it's worth taking a positive view especially yeah. given that the form has already been yeah absolutely given a positive light and also the the pretty poly stakes uh, group one for Phillies over 10 furlongs um, six winners from 16 runners had had their last run in the Epsom Oaks and gone to that again really good strike rate oh, yeah. concert hall dropping back to 10 tranquil lady potentially Concert Hall would be good for 10, wasn't she, from, yeah. from yeah. memory? She shapes like a, a, a horse that maybe just got stretched to Epsom, but was too, yeah. too slow. And obviously, her, her, um, her Leopardstown form was Frank to Ascot as well, by the second. Yeah. So, yeah. that could be of interest. Uh, so, plenty to, uh, to look forward to. What are you looking forward to most this week? Um, I'm going to have to see the Gosford Park Cup. It's a lot of old friends. Okay. There you go. Matt? I do, I do like the Northumberland Plate. There's a, there's, it's a, it is a big old puzzle to solve, in it? And obviously, we've got Trushan, possibly. This year as well, it's going to be an interesting race from that point. Got to give nineteen pounds. It's a lot. It's a, a lot. lot. But also, it, 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 these horses tend to run well the way Denman used to, because so many of the interesting horses are now out of the weights. Yeah. You know, you've got to be rated at that point. I don't. I can't remember what the spread is, but at that point, you've got to be rated about a hundred to be running off your right mark. Yeah. yeah. Well, so Trush, yeah. Will Trushan turn up. That's the question. Trushan, the Axel Rose of horse racing. <laughs> <laughs> when will the album arrive? Will they ever? Turn up again. That's uh, that's true, Chef. But uh, can't be too quick on all weather, can it? What the ground? The ground can't be too quick on Tapita. Uh Who knows? But can the wind be too strong? Wind. I've never seen an on runner based on wind. Have you? Too windy. Depends. We pulled him out. It was too windy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. If anybody's gonna, it'll be true. <laughs> there you go. Is it too wind? Too windy for true, Chef. That's going to be the headline on today's flat pack. To close out the show, then, it is that moment that nobody's been waiting for except for possibly me and, of course, Bruce Horsine. It is Beat Keith, everybody. Who knows if there's music. Uh, it is everyone's favourite game show, uh, whereby the uh, the man of the moment, Keith Melrose, who knows everything there is to know about horse racing, uh, gets challenged by Matt Gardner, who will come out on top in a series of questions that are 100% too hard in hindsight. Well, let's find out. Keith and Matt, how are you feeling? Yeah, I hate that build-up. Yeah? Yeah. You just, you, you're sweating. I die inside every time. Yeah, yeah. Because you, but, but as soon as you answer a question right, you're like a kid in a sweet shop. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You, you went from naught to 100 like Oh, no, I'm, I'm a terrible book. <laughs> yeah. You, you, it's like, oh, I'm not interested unless I'm winning. I hate, yeah. I, hate the, I hate the whole premise. The whole premise of beat Keith means that I'm expected to win, which I, this is the bit I hate the most. Yeah. But you like to be the underdog, is what you're saying. It doesn't everybody. I don't know. Matt Gardner, do you like to be the underdog? No, don't say that, because then it means I'm expected to win. <laughs> <laughs> and now, you won the first incarnation of uh, Beat Keith last, uh, whatever week it was. Um, and I've taken your feedback on board. 
I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely yeah. haven't. Okay, do you want to go first, uh, Matt, or do you want to go first, Keith? What's the oh, you, you, you get the call. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go first. You'll go first. Let's get, okay. get over with. Okay, five categories, uh, mainly based around Royal Ascot. Let's see who comes out on top. Uh, okay, first subject is anagrams. That's right, Matt, anagrams. How are you, how are you with anagrams? Oh, we'll find out, but I'm expecting not very good. Okay, lovely. <laughs> I've got four of them for you to choose from. Pick a number. Three. Let's go for three. Okay, which Royal Ascot winner from last week is an anagram of Travel Lion? That's Travel Lion. Um, oh God, I hate this. Absolutely no idea. Absolutely no idea. To, you no, sure? Yeah, no idea. Ah, it was Latin lover. Tell you what, that really, because I was, I couldn't get a native trail out of my head. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be <laughs> fair. It didn't run. Yeah. But it wasn't far off. Okay. No idea. Zero. Keith Melrose, uh, you've got one, two or four left. I'll take one. Given your first effort, it was probably likely to be your strongest. I'll go one. Okay. Number one. Which horse who won at Royal Ascot last week is an anagram of Almanac Gigolo? Almanac Gigolo. Almanac Gigolo. Spell as you'd expect. <laughs> I mean, it's hard enough without yeah. misspelling. Almanac Gigolo. Almanac Gigolo. I mean, there's only, what? To be fair, 35 to choose from. That's quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, so there is. I mean, no, it's, it's, I, I hope you've stuck an H in there and it's, uh, no, it's not changing in the card. It? No, I just, I don't care. <laughs> I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone. I'm not going to get it. So It was I'm, Magical Lagoon. Oh yeah, I've actually forgotten about that horse. You have, you have. Uh, you had other, other two other suggestions. If you select number ten, overall dread, you would have got that surely. Overall dread, Eldor Eldorov. <sighs> I'm not enjoying these anagrams no. at all. Or uh, safest otter. <laughs> uh, safest otter. Oh. State of rest. State of rest. State oh, of rest. Oh, there you mm, go. Okay, you zero nice points. Zero mm. points. Don't worry. Uh, I do have an anagram as a tiebreak if it gets to it. Uh, zero zero. Um, Matt, first one off the board for you. This subject is big margins. Who won by the biggest distance at Royal Ascot? That Godolphin thing. Uh, that Godolphin thing. Is that a spin-off of that 70s show? Uh, lovely, lovely blanket guess. Uh, in the listed race, did you buy something or other? It was last week, lads. I do not remember the winners. It was last week. I can't remember the horse's name. But I'll get in uh, No. I guess Candleford, because I know that horse is mine. It was Candleford. Oh, I was guessing Candleford. It was well, Candleford. Yeah, yeah. I went there initially. Yeah. But it was, it was so good. we both got that. Yeah, you did, yeah, but he's an absolute maggot because he was, he only answered it because he couldn't remember the name of yeah, Dubai Future. Yeah, he spawned that one, hasn't he? Uh, who won by the shortest distance? Right. Uh, who did we think got I know one that was very close, but I reckon there's probably a closer one. Uh, let's go Naval Crown. Eldor, Eldor, Eldor. Oh, of course, yeah. We've already mentioned this. See, they were easy ones. They, they were, were easy yeah, ones. I should have got that one. I mean, Naval Crown was a very close one. He was, what, is he a head or is he a short head? I don't know, but he wasn't a nose. He wasn't a nose. He wasn't a nose. Right. Okay, 1-0 to Matt. 1-0 to Matt. Okay, uh, Matt, this is uh, entitled Back for More. Naval Crown won the, uh, the Platinum Jubilee after placing in the jersey, but who was the last horse to come out of the jersey and win a Group 1 at the following year's meeting? That was in 2016 and 2017. God. Don't know that one. Um, Keith, I think Keith knows it. I've got a hand on the horse in my head. Um, I'm going to get that looked at. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Who is was it, it, Keith? Is it Ribchester? It is Ribchester. It is Ribchester, who oh, won the, the Queen Anne the following year. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, Keith, Richard Farr, he won the Norfolk Stakes for the second year running this year. But who was the last trainer to do so back in 2006? In 2007. Right, so it's obviously then too early for Ward. Uh, six and seven. Johnson. Ah, it's Peter Chapel Hyam. Oh, fuck. That is, that is <laughs> vicious. With Winker Watson <laughs> and Dutch Art. That is oh, horrible. Really, like, yeah, yeah, dear me. Yeah, probably too no. difficult. Too difficult? Might be too difficult. Okay, it's one nil to Matt. Uh, okay, this is uh, entitled Twicer. Uh, Baid beat Real World into second again. Uh, giving uh, memories of Frankel and Acceleration. But how many times did Frankel beat Acceleration into second place in their careers? Ooh. Um, four. Four. Correct, Amundo. 2-0 to Matt Gardner, beating Keith. 
Uh, Keith, despite this, how many Group 1s did Acceleration actually win? Must have got. Definitely won that QE2. It's just whether he won any others. Two. He won three. Oh, okay, I was never getting. I was. He won the Mulan, the Malwar, and the QE2. There you go. And he, he, just, he would have won seven Group 1s. Yeah. The celebration would have been... He was a good horse. He was, he, a, was, he was a proper horse as well. He was a proper yeah. horse. Okay, fair enough. 2-0 to Matt. But you can get it back with this, potentially. Okay. Because this final question is, uh, five horses won last week, starting with the letter C, including the aforementioned Candleford. Uh, can you name them? We'll start off with you to have a shot, and then we'll go to you, and we'll see how it goes. Matt Garner, you're up first. The horse beginning with C. Um... Change another guard. Change another guard, that's one. That's the one I've got as well. Uh, Keith? Uh, Thanks, mate. That's it. You're getting, uh, Is that get, am I getting, getting hurried up here? Uh, it's turned into a seance. It has turned into this. We'll all be dead. We'll all be dead by the time I'm finished. I've got to pass. I've got to pass then. You're going to have to pass. I can't, I can't think of another. Of okay, the... Matt, there's three more on the table. Well, yeah, you've got another Producer one. Producer Dan got. knows them. Does he? If you yeah, don't, no, I, saw, I saw him waving a minute ago. If that, that didn't help. Um, At this rate, Dan might actually get more questions right than Keith in beat Keith. Mm. Um, okay, you've got five seconds. I've not come up with any more. One. No? no? Producer Dan? Caribus. Caribus. Ah, of course, yeah. Claymore and Coltrane. Oh, Claymore was one of my moments of the week. Well, dearie me. Oh, sorry, that was. Uh, it is too hard, isn't it? It absolutely is too hard. But I mean, it would have been one. No, oh, no, I would have got beaten the last question. God, yeah. The rib chest one fell badly for me. It did. Yeah. It, it, I mean, look, I think the questions are too hard, but it was still a terrible performance on your part. Oh, it was awful, yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely part. Uh, the final tie break was one more anagram. Uh, stitched emus. <laughs> stitched emus. Stitched emus. Stitched emus. All right, it was Mr. Cut. Mr. Cut. Okay. Uh, that was a, yeah, I should have got that one because yeah. I, I liked that one. That was. That was the progressive middle distance horse of the week for me. That, that's yeah, proper yeah. horse, that, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, proper horse, that. That brings to an end, beat Keith, uh, where Keith was resoundly beaten, out of sight, beaten out of sight, he was. Um, leathered, mullered by Matt Gardner. Welcome uh, to the winner's enclosure, Matt. How does it feel? Good. I'm thinking already it's going to be a fairly infrequent visit, but um, yeah, I'll take it while I can. You will indeed. Yep. Uh, that brings to an end the, the flat pack, gents. Um, I think we talked way too much about wind. <laughs> But overall, I think we've gone through every possible angle with a fine tooth comb. Yeah, just about. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back next week to, um, I don't know what we're doing, dissecting the, <laughs> dissecting the derby in the North of Plate. That's yeah, how it goes. Yeah, it's the eclipse next week as well. It is, of course. Yeah, we're off to Sandown. Yeah. 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 The coral people talking it up as a race of the year, but we'll see if the horses actually turn up. Yeah. We had, what, four last year? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully we'll get a few more. You'd never get big fields because you don't have enough good horses to, but all you want is the big ones. That is true, but every horse that's run this year, age three, four, five, or six, within a mile, ten furlongs, or a mile and a half, have gone. Be great if it turned up in the eclipse. French Derby horse was on about being supplemented, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. I think so. That would be good to see if he did. There you go. Yeah. So we could be in for a, uh, a cracking uh, renewal of the eclipse at Sandown. Fingers crossed. Uh, this has been the Flat Pack. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, leave any comments and thoughts and feelings and uh, abuse below. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be back next week. Uh, thank you very much. Have a lovely life. Thank you.